Security is one of the main concerns when connecting embedded devices to the network. I'm Alan Grau, and I'm the president and co-founder of Icon Labs. Icon Labs is a software company that builds security into embedded devices, and we've partnered with Renesas to create integrated solutions for IoT device developers. In this video series, we're going to talk about a number of security concerns and how they can be addressed for IoT devices. In this video, we'll start by talking about how hackers can attack microcontrollers and microcontroller-based devices and use those devices both to probe deeper into networks and to attack the devices themselves. So there's a number of reasons to build security into embedded devices and IoT devices. And the first is that these are targets for attacks. One of the big attacks against embedded devices that really caught people's attention was the Stuxnet virus in 2010. And that was an attack against Siemens PLCs used in production facilities in the Iranian nuclear process. Another high profile attack was in Germany in December of 2014, in which hackers were able to penetrate the outer perimeter, the outer cyber defenses on a steel plant and caused damage to, uh, to the plant itself. As a result of the attack, the operators actually lost control of the production facility. The industrial control systems went into an error state and as a result, a blast furnace, which is used to melt steel, had to be shut down using the emergency stop procedures. And as a result, this caused both physical damage to the machinery and the plant itself, as well as downtime. And while the details have never been published on this, this had to have cost millions of dollars. And another cyber attack that often is looked at as being just another data breach is the target data breach in which millions of credit card numbers were released. But this attack is actually interesting from an embedded point of view because the initial entry point into the network was through an HVAC system. Hackers stole credentials to that system and used that to gain entry into the network. From there, they used that breached embedded device to move laterally in the network to do additional reconnaissance and eventually found their way to the point of sales terminals upgrade server. And on that, they were able to install malware. And that malware then collected credit card numbers and exfiltrated it back through that same point of sales terminal. So in all three of these cases, an embedded device was used as an important part of a cyber attack. And in all three cases, there was no security on the device, no intrusion detection on the device, nothing to stop those attacks or even alert people that they were even going on. Some of the other drivers for security in embedded devices are simply productivity. The cost of downtime can be hundreds of thousands of dollars per hour on an industrial control system. Standards compliance is another important consideration for adding security to your device. Oftentimes it's a selection criteria for purchasing. One of the main standards in the industrial automation space is the IEC 62443 standard and the accompanying EDSA certification requirements. And some large companies are requiring their vendors to be compliant with the EDSA certification in order to purchase their devices. Another security driver is market pressures. If your products are hacked, that can damage your brand. And if your competition isn't using cybersecurity in their marketing as a competitive advantage today, they soon will be. This is a quote from Sean Moyer, who's a penetration tester. And his job is to take embedded devices and test them to find security holes. So you could go and hire his company to test your product before you release it to make sure that it's got appropriate security measures built into it. So the solution is that you have to build security into the device. The target data breach shows that relying simply on the perimeter isn't sufficient. When you build your product and when you're architecting your solution, you have to consider security from the very beginning. And only by building security in the device can you address things such as secure boot and security management and secure firmware updates. The other reality is that if you simply rely on security perimeters, you're adding more hardware. And each time you add hardware to the system, you're adding more and more cost. So when you look at adding security to your device, it's really about providing protection from cyber attacks. And during this video series, we're gonna cover a number of different topics, one of which is secure encrypted communication and authentication and how those can be implemented. Another topic is secure boot. You know, how do you know that the software running on your device is true authentic software that you developed and not software that was installed by a hacker or a malicious third party? 
And along with that is the question of how do you update the software securely? How are secure code updates handled? As we know from the target data breach, intrusion detection and security monitoring are critical elements. You know, had that HVAC system had intrusion detection software on it, they would have been able to determine much, much earlier that they were being hacked and could have taken action to stop it before all the credit card numbers were leaked. And then data security is another consideration. This is typically the leading concern in IT networks. And in building OT networks, this may not be the only or the major concern, but it still has to be addressed. In this video, we've talked about why security is a critical requirement for IoT endpoints. To truly secure these devices, you must build security into the device itself. And Icon Labs and Renaissance have worked together to provide an integrated solution to make it easier for you to add security to your IoT device. We'll cover these topics in more detail in future videos, showing you details on the variety of security solutions that we're providing. Mm -hmm.